Hello everybody and welcome back to this new episode of Textile with Alberto. Yes, I am Alberto and today we are going to talk about silk, one of the most beautiful among the natural fibers. We will see a little bit of history, a little bit of production features and comparison with the cotton and a couple of stories I'm sure you will enjoy. Stick with me, I think you will like what I got for you. Hey guys, I'm Alberto and I'm a textile technician that lives and works in Italy. I have decided to make this YouTube channel to share all my textile and leather knowledge with you, but without further ado, let's have a quick look at the definition of silk. What is it? According to the European Regulation of Textile Fibers, silk is a fiber obtained exclusively from silk secreting insects. What are these insects? I have prepared for you guys a list of all the insects that actually make silk. Among those, the most important are silkworms, and among the silkworms, the most important is Bombyx mori. Bombyx mori is basically this silkworm over here. Since the silk comes basically from an animal like wool or like other proteic fibers, we actually put the silk here. It's different from the cotton, hemp or flax, they can actually are put in the vegetable fibers, in this case we put them in the animal fibers like wool. Also if we have a quick look at the microscope, the fiber of silk is completely different from the fiber of cotton. Now that we have understood what silk is, let's have a quick look at history. Silk and sericulture were well known also 5000 years ago, China was the first one making silk. Romans didn't know of the existence of silk until the Battle of Carrhae. In this battle, the Romans lost against the Parthian Empire and they were shocked, they were stunned by the banners of the enemy because the banners were made with a strange textile woven and that was silk. It was so lucent, so bright, they actually didn't know what that was. Then from that episode, thanks to the Silk Road, Europeans did know what silk was thanks to the traders, merchants and th that used to trade, for example, gold and other goods, for example, salt, with the Chinese people, and in this way they actually did know what silk was. And during the Middle Age they started to read the Bombyx Mori, especially in Sicily, France and a little bit in the northern part of Italy. Unfortunately, in 1845 something bad happened, a really big disease, actually killed a lot of silkworms and the silkworms started to uh, die over and over again. Also Louis Pasteur was asked to help and to find a solution to this disease but couldn't help and the silk prices started to soar and the demand started to soar and unfortunately in that period also artificial silk called viscose was invented by Chardonnay and the demand slowly but surely decreased a little bit whereas the 20th century Thanks to the synthetic fibers like polyamide, polyester, the demand of the silk just drastically decreased during the years and until now, it, now silk is still used of course but only for clothing. Nowadays for example in Como, I live near Como, uh, a lot of clothing made of silk, especially ties, are still manufactured. Anyway, let's have a quick look at the producers in the world nowadays in 2021. During these years, actually things didn't change. The first producer of silk are still Chinese and India. China is leading and actually exports 54% of the total production of silk in the world. Then we have some producers in Uzbekistan, Brazil, Myanmar, Thailand and a little bit in Vietnam. Let's see now how silk is produced. First of all, if you want to know what silk is and how is it produced, we have to make a step back and we have to understand what sericulture is. Sericulture is basically the breeding of the Bombyx mori. How do you breed the Bombyx mori? You just feed him with the mulberry tree leaves. Then, when the silkworm started to make its own cocoon, before transforming into a moth, you actually have to take the cocoons, you have to boil them and you have to make all the plies into one yarn. This is known as the gumming process. Why do you have to do this? For two reasons. The first one is actually that if you don't kill the larva, the larva will become a moth. 
The second thing is that you have to make the degumming process to remove all the sericine uh, from the fibroin, which is the best part of the silk. Then from the boiling process and the degumming process, all the, thing, all the rest is basically the same as cotton. So if you don't know anything about textile supply chain, I'll suggest you to see this video over here. I'll explain in this video actually how uh, yarn is transformed into trousers, sweater and other textile products. Now let's have a look at the pros and cons of silk. First of all, silk is loosened, is bright, is beautiful. And if you think about it, it's one of the most beautiful among the natural fibers. Secondly, it's comfortable. And thirdly, it's hypoallergenic. Is it more hypoallergenic than cotton? The answer is yes, because silk is resistant to mildew, mold and bacteria. Silk is also very, very resistant, mechanically speaking. And trust me, guys, this is one of the best perk that the silk might have. Why is it so important? I will tell you guys two fun stories. The first one is that actually screen printing is also called silk screen printing because it was made with silk yarns. And the second fun story is that maybe you don't know it, but parachutes were made of silk. And this is why there were not so many parachuters in the military army in Europe during the Second World War, but Americans were full of parachuters because polyamide nylon was invented and parachutes didn't cost so much as in Europe because in Europe they were made of silk. Anyway, you cannot make a parachute made of cotton because cotton is not as resistant as silk. And in the end, silk is also natural and environmental friendly. Let's see now all the cons that the silk has. First of all, silk is very, very expensive, guys. That's why silk is not as used as cotton and it's basically used for clothing, bedding and high quality textiles. Sometimes you will find also mm, silk in blends like, take me for example, I have a sweater, 20% silk, 80% cotton, but it's hard to find 100% silk and if, if you find it, trust me, it's very expensive, whether it is a tie or whether it is a sweater. Second thing I have to say about silk, silk is not as breathable as cotton, so it, let's, let's say you are in summer, it's better maybe to have a cotton t-shirt. The third thing I have to say about silk, actually you kill a lot of animals. I know they are silkworms, I know they are basically not a dog or a cat, but trust me guys, this is like a genocide. You actually have to kill two, three thousand cocoons to make 0.5 kilos of silk yarn and that's really quite much. Also the famous and well-known Mahatma Gandhi was against the torture and boiling of the cocoons to make silk and he promoted uh, Hamiza silk, which basically was a silk made without boiling the pupa to procure the silk and wild silk made from the cocoons of wild and semi-wild silk moths. That's it for the pros and cons guys, now I would like you to leave with lotus silk. You have maybe heard of it, it's a very very famous silk and it's quite expensive and it comes from the lotus, from the plant. It's a very particular silk, very expensive. You will find all the story in the link below. And the second thing I want to tell you guys is Bissus. What is Bissus? Bissus is basically a silk called silk coming from the sea or sea silk and it comes from the muscle pinna nobilis. As you can see from the photo, this is the muscle. Fun story about the Bissus is this big, basically there is one woman located in Sardinia that still nowadays handily weaves Bissus all by herself. Bissus was well known also in the Middle Ages, priests and rich people used to wear it but it's very very expensive guys and there are still in Sardinia some breeding companies that breeds this kind of Pinna nobilis but it's very very fascinating guys because it's silk coming from the sea so you won't find this fiber anywhere else, not in the mall, not in the supermarket. I have told you enough about this story, I will leave the document and the story below, so if you are interested in this story, you will find the details below. That's it for today guys, I hope you have enjoyed the video and enjoyed the content of this video. If you have any suggestion to make, any comments, please share with me, you will find my details below with my emails. This is my second video of the Fibers Saga. As usual, may maybe in the next video I will talk about polyester, polyamide, or maybe wool, linen, flax, hemp, 
who knows anyway i thank you very much for your attention guys and as usual stay safe take care i'll see you guys in the next video